Hello friends, welcome to another supplement review. Today we will review one of the supplements I am most fond of and a supplement that I think potentially I'm the first person to discuss in the fitness community. In fact, I came across this supplement only through academic research and I've never heard about it from anyone before. This supplement will also be the first supplement that we discuss in this series that alters epigenetic expression. So for us to be able to understand how useful this supplement is, we have to understand what epigenetics are. So you have your genes which are given to you at birth and not supposed to change throughout your lifetime. But you also ha have how those genes are transcribed actively in your cells. This gene transcription uh, and basically what it means is the uh, expression of your genes is epigenetic. It is determined by a mixture of your genetics and your environment. Now there are some conditions, for example cancers, in which cells become unable to respond to their environment. They sort of get stuck in a process or a path in which they're going to. And for example, the longevity researcher, uh, David Sinclair from Harvard, who I highly recommend his book, he has a theory of aging called the information theory of aging, which basically at its fundamental core uh, sees aging as being uh, an information a mistake in epi an epigenetic programming. Basically, uh, David Sinclair sees aging as mainly being problems with epigenetics, which is why, for example, David Sinclair is so interested in sirtuins. Sirtuins are actually a class of histone deacetylase inhibitors, or, uh, sorry, a class of histone deacetylases. Histone de so histones, what they are, is proteins that wrap DNA in the nucleus of cells. The way that they are wrapped according to their acetylation or deacetylation affects how much information or how this information is expressed in the cell, the, the DNA. So histone deacetylases are, are uh, enzymes that remove, his, uh, remove acetyl groups from the histones. And these histone deacetylases, which are enzymes, have been inhibited by certain compounds, one of which is an FDA approved treatment for cancer. It's called Voronitz, uh, Voronostat, Voronostat. Anyway, it's a kind of leukemia it's uh, prescribed for. And in fact, these histone deacetylase inhibitors are being researched for the treatment of um, epigenetic alterations that occur in addiction. So for example, with cocaine, with methamphetamine, with alcohol addiction, and so on. Before I get started with this video, guys, I want to let you know, as usual, there is a blog post linked down below in the description. This blog post is actually really useful. It's not a bunch of text and writing. It's a bunch of bullet points divided into sections. Uh, each section is like, like there's a cardiovascular section, there's a brain section, so on. You have my notes in bullet points with citations that you can go uh, plug into Google Scholar to read the actual article to learn more about what I'm about to talk about, which is, by the way, butyrate, the fatty chain, the short chain fatty acid. So let's get started. I hope you guys visit the blog and also on the blog post, you'll be able to get a link to my recommended supplement brand for this supplement that I'm about to discuss. So otherwise, let's get started. But before we do, just an overview for those that don't know. Obviously, we're talking about something that may alter epigenetic expression. But why do we want to do this? Well, this thing, the short chain fatty acid butyrate, has been shown to, I mean, the main reason I use it is because of its incredible impacts on the brain. But there's also a lot of evidence for its impacts on cancers, for its impacts on autoimmune diseases, and for its impacts on obviously epigenetics. So let's get started. First of all, butyrate is a short chain fatty acid with four carbons, so it's C4. It's produced by the microbiome in our bodies naturally. The amount of butyrate that's in our serum or in our blood fluctuates dramatically according to the activity of our microbiome. In general, it's quite low in the blood, though at certain times it rises and then shoots back down again. Most of it otherwise is found in the digestive system, uh, closer to where the microbiome is. Uh, there are also uh, other short-chain fatty acids produced by the microbiome, by the way. There's like uh, acetate, which is C2. There's propionate, which is C3. And C2, C3, and C4, which is butyrate, they come in 60-20-20 ratios in the colon. But keep in mind that people produce butyrate and these different short-chain fatty acids at different rates. So people's fecal matter can vary in its content of butyrate by a factor of 10x. So very dramatic uh, changes in the amount of butyrate in our colorectal systems, depending on our microbiome and our genetics, of course. Let me see if there's something more I'd like to mention about the microbiome. Um, so it's produced from fiber, obviously, in the gut. 
And also one interesting thing is that supplementing with butyrate has been shown to, to improve the health of the microbiome. What does that mean? It improves probably the diversity or variety of uh, bacterial species and also inhibits the activity of some of the more detrimental bacterial species. Another interesting thing I should mention is that the receptors uh, or not receptors, sorry, but the transporters of butyrate, their expression in the gut is upregulated when NF-kappa-B signaling is activated. NF-kappa-B is a pro-inflammatory gene transcription pathway. What this seems to mean is that when your body is in an inflamed state, the transporters of butyrate are more active, telling us something about butyrate's activity in the uh, inflammatory state in the body. Now, in terms of its metabolism, I just wanted to mention here that there is a pro-drug for butyrate called tributyrin, which is, um, for example, it has, uh, it's metabolized slower. It's a better version. It's called tributyrin. And that is, by the way, the supplemental version that I use, which you'll find on my blog post and on, maybe I'll talk about at the end of this video also. Uh, I'd also like to mention that, so butyrate may ex increase the expression also of other uh, short chain fatty acids or structurally similar molecules like D-beta hydroxybutyrate. Now in terms of receptors for butyrate, many people don't know that fatty acids actually have receptors. So for example, a famous group of receptors, the peroxisome proliferator activated receptors, PPAR, are targets of the drug carterine or GW, whatever it is they have a group of PPR receptors called delta or beta that are targets of that. There are PPR alpha receptors and there are PPR gamma receptors, for example. But all these receptors are actually the natural ligands of fatty acids. So for example, the, um, the PPR gamma receptors are ligands, are, are sorry, natural, natural receptors for the ligand lauric acid, which is C10, 10 carbon atoms in a medium chain fatty acid. So uh, these fatty acids have receptors and I just thought to mention, I don't know if I should really mention this on the video, you know, you'll see it in the notes, there are, I mentioned the receptors that it has, some of them bind for example niacin to them and so on, I won't mention it in the video. Now in terms of histone deacetylase inhibition, what that means when you inhibit histone deacetylase uh, enzymes is that you can change the expression of about 2% of our genes, which is very significant. Butyric acid, which is the supplement we're talking about, by the way, it's commonly called sodium butyrate, but butyric acid is the most potent histone deacetylase inhibitor that's endogenously found in our bodies. And it is uh, preferential, there are four classes of histone deacetylases, it is uh, preferential for classes one and two. Now, beta hydroxybutyrate, which is elevated when we're in a ketogenic diet, also is a histone deacetylase inhibitor, and that may play a role in the life extension um, effects that's been seen with some rodent models with ketogenic diets. Um, but it's also been shown that beta-hydroxybutyrate, when in a ketogenic diet, upregulates the expression of brain-derived neurotrophic factor due to the histone deacetylase inhibition. So this brings us to the topic of brain-derived neurotrophic factor and epigenetic modifications. So what exactly does sodium butyrate do for our brain? Why is it so attractive to, uh, for me? Uh, let me mention, it's far more attractive than what I talked about last week, which was quercetin. Okay, I'll give you a, a run-through of the bullet points I made here. So for example, it's been shown that histone, uh, elevating histone acetylation, which is the consequence of, of reducing histone deacetylation, improves long-term potentiation in rodents, which means it improves the process that forms memories. Uh, actually, in many, many studies, I've, li I've linked quite a few of them. Basically, in many studies, supplementing butyrate in rodents has improved their memory, basically. Uh, butyrate is also neuroprotective in a bunch of neurodegenerative disease models, including Huntington's disease, ALS, Parkinson's disease, and specifically, it's neuroprotective against dopam uh, of dopaminergic uh, neurons in Parkinson's disease as well as vascular dementia, which is another form of dementia that's due to circulation and stuff like that. Uh, but butyrate also improves cognitive function in uh, animal models of Alzheimer's disease and reduces beta amyloid plaque in their brains, which is the one of the main two pathological um, molecules that creates the Alzheimer's disease ideology in the brain. Uh, in rodent models of lipopolysaccharide-induced depression, lipopolysaccharides are inflammatory mo molecules produced by your microbiome that can get uh, systemic in your body and can cause depression. It's been shown that sodium butyrate reduces activation of the microglia, which are the main inflammatory components of the nervous system. 
and improved behavioral symptoms from the LPS-induced depression. Uh, butyrate has also been shown to increase the neurological effects of cocaine and amphetamines and increase their drug-induced neuroplasticity. Why is that a good thing? Well, a lot of these molecules that protect people from Parkinson's disease actually do this because they inhibit dopaminergic signaling. Because Parkinson's disease seems to often develop because of too much dopaminergic signaling, dopamine can be a neurotoxin and can kill neurons. What's interesting about this here is that it shows because butyrate enhances the neurological effects of amphetamines, it shows con conclusively that butyrate is not inhibiting dopaminergic activity. Anything that exaggerates the effects of act uh, cocaine or amphetamines means it enhances dopaminergic activity. So for example, sigma-1 agonism with like a DHEA sulfate will also do that. Um, sigma-1 agonism will increase dopaminergic activity and do the same thing for amphet amphetamines as well. So this is a good news because I don't want to reduce my dopaminergic signal. Like I just want to protect my brain from uh, harm, you know? So uh, also it's been shown that butyrate's plasticity inducing effects on the brain are comparable to those uh, that people get from cardiovascular exercise. Finally, it seems that a lot of the effects of sodium butyrate on the brain are due to sodium butyrate's uh, or butyrate's effect on, on BDNF gene transcription, mRNA uh, transcription. Uh, due to the HDAC inhibition, just like with beta-hydroxybutyrate from the ketones, uh, ketogenic diets. And it seems that HDAC2 and HDAC3 from class 1 are most relevant to the expression of BDNF. So uh, now we've talked briefly about the blood-brain barrier. The blood-brain barrier is what pro uh, prohibits molecules in your body from crossing into your nervous system. When you're very young, the blood-brain barrier is quite... Uh, um, it's actually, it has integrity. Well, not when you're a baby, but when you're, when you're a young man, you have integrity in your blood-brain barrier. As you age, the integrity reduces and things that shouldn't be getting into your nervous system tend to. It's been shown that people who are, or uh, animals that are deficient in butyrate have more permeable blood-brain barriers, meaning less integrity. And when given butyrate, the uh, blood-brain barrier uh, integrity improves. In terms of depression, first of all, I want to mention that electroconvulsive shock, which is a treatment for depression, has been shown to increase histone H3 acetylation, meaning a similar effect to inhibiting histone uh, deacetylation. Um, it's also been shown that uh, deacetylation of hippocampal histones inhibits the antidepressant effect of some drugs. Sodium butyrate produces an antidepressant effect on its own and enhances the antidepressant effect of the most famous SSRI, fluoxetine, also called Prozac. So this shows that butyrate, probably because of HDAC inhibition, produces an independent antidepressant effect and is synergistic with SSRIs, which is again, as you can see, why I'm so interested in this, in this uh, molecule. And uh, again, BDNF expression, uh, basically, it seems that most of the antidepressant effect is due to brain-derived neurotrophic factor expression, which, by the way, is one of the growth factors of the brain that I'm personally most fond of because a lot of the other growth factors are considered oncogenic. Oncogenic means they have played roles in cancer, brain cancer development. A BDNF is the least likely to do so, so I'm always focusing on BDNF. There are other targets for neurotrophic factors, like BDNF's target is TRKB. There's also TRKA for nerve growth factor, there's TRKC, and there's other, other targets also. I try not to focus on these because although brain cancers are quite rare, nobody really, you know, you don't want to do that. So uh, in terms of metabolic syndrome, type 2 diabetes, insulin resistance, uh, sodium butyrate has been shown to uh, reduce hepatic steatosis, which means inflammation at the liver, due to a high-fat diet. It's also been shown to do this due to a high-fat and fructose diet, which is interesting because fructose is an inflammatory molecule for the liver and causes uh, toxicity. Uh, sodium butyrate also imp improves the uh, systemic inflammatory state in models of uh, type 2 diabetes. It uh, attenuates diabetic nephropathy through uh, activating the gene transcription, uh, anti-inflammatory gene transcription pathway called NRF2. And it improves actually glycogen metabolism in the livers of uh, diabetic rad ra rabbits. Was it rabbits or rodents? I don't know. Whatever, some small creature. <laughs> anyway, uh, sorry. But the reason I don't remember this, by the way, is because I, I compiled these notes a few weeks ago. So usually when I compile the notes more, more recently, I'm, uh, the individual papers are more memorable to me. 
So it also, now this is very interesting, so, um, sodium butyrate protects, it, there's one model, or there's one study showing sodium butyrate protects the liver of rodents from sodium valproate induced liver dysfunction, which is very interesting because sodium valproate is actually the other HDAC inhibitor that I take. And it is a little bit hepatotoxic, particularly at the higher doses. So this was very fortuitous. I will talk about sodium valproate probably in the GABA series, most likely. Um, sodium butyrate also upregulates the PPR gamma receptor in obese rodents. PPR gamma receptor is important because uh, agonism there helps to basically put fat in the right places. Put fat in adipocytes, fat cells, instead of in the blood or, um, or in visceral fat or on organs and so on. So basically sodium butyrate is also very attractive for people with metabolic conditions. In terms of the kidneys, there's a rodent model uh, showing a, a rodent model of chronic kidney disease showing that butyrate improved renal condition and insulin resistance. In terms of cardiovascular di disease, butyrate has improved uh, reduced oxidative stress at atherogenic sites, which means where plaques are in the cardiovascular system, which is important because when oxidative stress occurs there, um, sometimes um, issues can happen with the plaques where they can burst or so, so on. It's also been shown to uh, reduce plaque development from a high fat diet in uh, rodent models. And in terms of autoimmune disease, so this is one of the major uh, interests in terms of butyrate. So butyrate has been shown to improve symptoms of colitis, probably by increasing mucosal synthesis. So there's mucus that covers our intestines. Colitis is basically a condition, an inflammatory condition, where you have inflammatory cytokines attacking your intestines, mainly because, or hopefully because, bacteria are trying to get out of the intestines by eating your intestines because they're starving of fiber or some other, or because they're uh, pathologic bacteria or something like that. So sodium butyrate is thought to increase the mucus that lines the intestines, so protect them from this bacteria, and also to improve just generally the gut barrier uh, uh, permeability. Uh, sodium butyrate has also been shown to improve um, um, symptoms of autoimmune skin conditions, of which there are many, like eczema, things like that. And in colitis, it's also improved uh, uh, conditions by reducing NF-kappa B signaling, which is that pro-inflammatory gene transcription signaling. So for people with colitis or Crohn's disease or autoimmune diseases like myself, you may be particularly interested in this endogenous molecule that we already have in our bodies. A couple of final things before I end. In terms of cancer, so as you know, there is a drug that is an H2 inhibitor that's used for the treatment of uh, certain kinds of blood cancers. But there's uh, sodium butyrate has been shown to cause uh, the death of cancer cells in colon, rectal, colorectal cancer cell lines, breast cancer cell lines. It's been shown to cause autophagy in colorectal cancer cell lines by uh, activating the AMP kinase pathway. And I thought this was pretty interesting. There's a US patent held by a Chinese gentleman on a method of treating cancer with metformin and sodium butyrate. Finally, in terms of longevity, butyrate may increase the expression of FOXO3A, which is a protein coded by the gene FOXO3A, which is probably the single nucleotide polymorphism most associated with longevity, at least at that uh, gene. So uh, that's the end of my notes on sodium butyrate. I hope this was not too long-winded. Basically, this is a supplement that I'm very, very interested in. If you go to my uh, notes section on the blog, you'll see that I recommend specifically one supplement brand. The reason why, I've tried several supplement brands that carry sodium butyrate. I didn't trust any of them. The brand I recommend to you is actually a brand I generally trust. Unfortunately, none of the sodium butyrates have been tested by th third-party testers, and I'm not into testing it right now. The good thing about sodium butyrate is when you get sodium butyrate, you'll know if it's sodium butyrate. Butyrate comes from the Greek word for butter. It smells a little bit like butter, but, it, but butyrate is also a fundamental part of vomit and sweat. So there's a certain smell that comes with butyrate, so you'll know if you have it. But that one company that I said I do trust, they're also the company that, co that carries tributyrin, which is a much better formulation of sodium butyrate. So I highly recommend that company. You'll find a link to them on my blog on the notes and I uh, wish you guys well with sodium butyrate. It's really something I'm very proud of for discovering myself. It's something I've not seen anywhere else with anyone. Uh, I didn't learn this from anyone except uh, academic papers while I was trying to study epigenetics or uh, improving my brain function. It's very effective. I like it. Uh, you know, I combine it with, for example, saffron and other supplements that improves uh, my SSRI's effects. And I hope you guys also get uh, beneficial effects from it. I'll see you next week with another supplement review.